Hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in again. I'm at St Mark's Church building and this is for Sunday the 10th of May AD 2020. Of course part of VE Day celebrations 75 years on. Beside me on the screen you'll be able to see a picture of our RAF window our lasting and physical tribute to a part Bexhill played in the Second World War. A verse from a hymn. O God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. What was our home? What was our shelter? God himself. And that never changes. So for those who sign up to that truth, who live with that reality, we come together, yes, virtually, but in our hearts and minds and spirits to say to the Lord, thank you that we belong to you. And when we call upon your name, you hear so before this awesome and wonderful God and the privilege of being his sons and daughters, let's humble ourselves and make our confession. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done. And apart from your grace, there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy on us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who repent, as you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly, righteous and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect for today, the fourth Sunday after the great Sunday of Easter. Almighty God, you alone can order the unruly wills and passions of sinful men. Grant that your people may love what you command and desire what you promise, so that among the many and varied changes of this world, our hearts may be firmly fixed where true joys are to be found, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our psalm is number 51, verses 1 to 6. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Testimony there from King David, the great statesman of ancient Israel. To the problem of the world being the problem of the human heart. 
And hear this, Proverb 14, verse 30. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy rots the bones. What makes wars among us? Is it not a sense of envy leading to greed and then scheming and then the action to take control to invade? How discerning the scriptures are. Three verses from a hymn we sing each year at Remembrance Sunday. Eternal Father, strong to save, whose arm hath bound the restless wave, who bids the mighty ocean deep its own appointed limits keep. O oh, hear us when we cry to thee, for those in peril on the sea. O oh, Christ the Lord of hill and plain, over which our traffic runs amain by mountain pass or valley low. Where'er, Lord, thy brethren go, protect them by thy guardian hand from every peril on the land. Lord, guard and guide the men who fly through the great spaces in the sky. Be with them always in the air, in darkening storms or sunlight fair. Oh, hear us when we lift our prayer for those in peril in the air. And now we have our main reading. Today's reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, starting at verse 50. I declare to you, brothers, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labour in the Lord is not in vain. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable now and always in thy sight, O God, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So we have a window commemorating RAF Interceptor Station, Wartling. Spotters radioed RAF Uxbridge when the Germans were coming, and Spitfires and Hurricanes were scrambled to intercept the Dorniers and Heinkels as they came close to London. Bexhill itself was hit in the war as enemy bombers jettisoned their remaining payload before they recrossed the Channel. We're celebrating 75 years of victory in Europe. We thank God for those who died in the defence of our freedoms as we responded to an evil that became more and more apparent as the war went on. But of course, VE Day parties have had to be abandoned or scaled back and have joined the th list of things crossed out in our diaries. Is not God impressing upon us 
that man is not in charge of this world. As well as God driving us to save lives and not label some expendable and worthless or no longer able to appreciate good things. And I think God is also pointing us to remember that restrictions can be vital for health. Which, in case you haven't picked it up, is what God has been trying to teach his world ever since the dawn of history. The sign in our graveyard, indeed on the fence, from the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, recognises that our graveyard has five military graves. Those of Private J. Armstrong, King's Own Royal Lancaster Regiment, Pilot Officer H. G. Bell, RAF Volunteer Reserve, Lieutenant Colonel Burke, Sergeant R. W. H. Clark, Royal Artillery, and Lieutenant A. N. Swanson, Royal Navy. Our graveyard also has the feature of many crosses, always there or empty, that is, with the Christ figure taken down. With the figure on, we would call those a crucifix. But why this empty cross? Well, because ours is an Easter faith, based on Christ rising from the dead. So we look back to the cross of Good Friday in awe and appreciation, but realise that the body of our Lord was taken down from the cross so that it could be transformed and rise again on the third day, a validation, a vindication of the sacrifice of his sinful, sinless life for our sinful lives. So our sign is the cross of Christ, where the sting or pain of death, to use the line in the reading, was taken by Christ in his atonement for sin, which means that my death is only physical and not spiritual, and therefore the gateway to an eternal joy of heaven, and not the eternal abandonment of hell. Now, is that not the best news ever? I've been reading the gravestones on the left of the path as you walk into the church building. And have you noticed how so many people today are emphasising rightly that it is a, a church building? We call it church for short. Because then you make the distinction that the buildings are closed, but not the actual church. The actual church of living stones is as open and as alive to God as she can be. True, Hitler never closed the churches, that's the thing people are saying, but we must fight each war in ways that thwart the enemy. Back to those headstones. Their inscriptions say, fallen asleep in Christ, or called to a higher life, or at rest. You see, a cloud of witnesses are shouting out to us as we come in. We died in faith. We went to glory. We trusted in Christ. You must do so too. Don't miss out. The people who assemble in our building, and won't it be so good when we're free to do that again, are those who have crossed over from death to life, now with no condemnation awaiting them. You see, as I walk among these epitaphs, there's nothing sinister or gloomy among them. History is joining the present to make every Sunday a victory day. And Paul writes, thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul points us to Jesus, born in humility and serving in poverty, teaching the kingdom and healing the sick. He gave women a voice and men a mission, before dying in disgrace and rising to the glorious dimension of future life. Paul's verse speaks of victory in the greatest battle of life for each soul as we face the bullets of sin, the bombs of this world and the improvised explosive devices of the devil. Did you get the threefold mention to victory in the reading? Death used to have its victory, flying the flag over our lives. Then Christ rolled the gravestone away, 
the victory is now his. And here's the connection, his victory swallows up that of the devil. No wonder we say thanks be to God. So the victory was gained by Christ. Actually, on the Good Friday, as he died without sin, still avoiding the wrong, still doing the right in mind, word and deed, it is finished was his victory shout. You may say that, let's put it this way, slightly amending the image. Good Friday was his D-Day, because from then full visible success was assured, and Easter Sunday the V-E-Day. Victory for everyone. That victory has been proclaimed by apostles, missionaries, pastors and everyone when they say and show that Jesus is Lord. The victory is completed at the return of Christ to judge when he brings what everyone wants, but which everyone shares the guilt for not delivering. Justice, and therefore a perfect world. Do you want to be ready for that day? Then you must do two things. Firstly, secure your place. Claim a seat at the victory party called the Wedding Supper of the Lamb. Humble yourself to confess your sin and ask for forgiveness being serious with God, making your peace with him by claiming his peace for you, access by saying the name of Jesus and being a penitent in your heart. Secondly, live in the strength of God's spirit as someone whose death is sorted out. That means you'll just be ready. It's no longer a threat. The sting has been drawn. You could go there whenever the Lord summons you and you're ready to enjoy each day in that security. I'm trying to think what practicalities that would mean. Well, I think it means you make a will, specifying who gets what. You see, you're preparing. I think it means you write down your funeral arrangements, including your order of service, with songs of victory, joy and celebration. I think you're even ready to say your goodbye. I love you, thank you, I forgive you, please forgive me, and remember to join me in the next world. You will secure your place, won't you? Then I think if you've done those two things, you will truly live, yes of course, celebrating the successes of this world, even though they're only a shadow of the great victory we enjoy in its fullness in the world to come. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are full of gratitude today, both in our nation, that you brought us through that time when we stood alone against the evil threat of Nazi Germany. Thank you, Lord God, for the many blessings that flow from that into our lives even today. May we not take them for granted. But even more, we thank you for the victory of Christ through Good Friday and Easter Sunday, how it's represented around the church and in the symbol of the empty cross in so many places we can go. And we ask, Lord God, that that would be imprinted spiritually on our hearts so that we will be people of victory, people who walk humbly with you, people who prepare for whatever befalls us, because we know everything, life and death, are now in your hands, for your name's sake. Amen. Onward Christian soldiers marching us to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before, Christ, the royal master, leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banners go. And one of those banners is surely the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. 
He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. As we come together this morning, not in our building, but a church united as the Bride of Christ, we say the family prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We pray for our church, pleased with every member, and keep them safe in your love, that we may return in the future to worship together face to face. We pray for protection for the persecuted church asking that those who stand firm for you know the power of the risen, reigning Christ. This weekend we celebrate Victory in Europe Day and we ask that those values preserved through wartime adversity would not be forgotten in peacetime. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those men and women who have died in active service, particularly in the Second World War whose sacrifice brought victory in Europe. As we honour their courage and cherish their memory, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. For present times, bless and guide Elizabeth, our Queen, and the Royal Family. We ask for wisdom for our government as it seeks to lead our country out of lockdown. And thank you for all the scientists working to discover vaccines to combat COVID-19. We do not forget those working tirelessly in the NHS, food providers and the many other key workers. May they know your help in times of need. We bring before you our families, our friends and neighbours and ask your blessing on every one of them. For those working with local charities, for family support work, food bank and the Beachy Head Chaplaincy team. May they know you are with them as they seek to serve others with desperate needs. Our many care homes in Bexhill, including May's House, run by the Royal British Legion, face challenging times. We ask you to keep all residents and staff safe. May they know the comfort only you can give. We remember the sick, particularly those with coronavirus, the lonely, frustrated, frightened and those traumatised by war, and for all carers. May they seek you who cares for them all. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. We know many thousands have lost their life to the virus, each leaving a family mourning a loss. Through the darkness, may they know the truth of Jesus' words. For ourselves, may we find ways of serving you in these difficult days. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward, except that of knowing that we do thy will. Amen. And we include our prayers this morning. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we praise you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that we fall into no sin, nor run into any kind of danger, but govern and guide us at all times so that we may do what is right in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Two verses from another song, 
Soldiers of Christ, arise and put your armour on. Strong in the strength which God supplies through his eternal Son. Strong in the Lord of hosts and in his mighty power, who in the strength of Jesus is more than conqueror and a blessing to finish. May the Saviour who died, who rose and who reigns, give us peace in our troubles, hope in our despair and victory in all our conflicts. And so keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of the Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and all whom you love, both near and far, and remain with you always. Amen.